Thank you, Anna, for coming on this episode to uh, cover your situation, and uh, we can talk about what I would do if I were you. Okay, great. I can't wait to hear what you've got. Well, um, so I set this up. You're the first uh, of our uh, sort of short series here where we're going to uh, look at people's situations. Uh, in the past, we've had podcasts where people have done tremendously well and they've shared their their recoveries. But um, sometimes people aren't getting the same results as, as, as these other folks. And so it's nice to consider the situation that you're currently in and then look at everything possible um, in the next sort of 20, 25 minutes that we can uh, get you on the right track. Awesome. Yeah, I just, uh, I feel bad because it's like I said, I've gone, I've read, done extensive research, have read quite a bit, but it's the practical application of doing it day in, day out has been kind of my, uh, you know, nem- you know, my nemesis. So, so I'm definitely uh, open to whatever, whatever you think could help me because like I told you in the text message, short of a lobotomy, I, I just don't see how I can get. Um, okay. You know. Well, let, let, let's just back up a little bit. So um, um, first of all, have you clearly established and are certain in your mind that what you're eating affects your joint condition? Yes, definitely. Okay. Now, just before we started this call, the only thing we did discuss and the only thing that I know about you prior to this is that you did start on our essential package about three years ago um, and that you're finding it hard to stick to. So why not talk about your experience so far with trying to change your diet and trying to implement other pain reduction strategies and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep exploring your situation a bit further. Sure. Um not sure where to start. I guess, uh, I guess, say in the very beginning, or I guess if you want to say uh, my uh, growing up years, um, everything was processed. So very little. I would say I probably didn't have any type of vegetable except for lettuce on a hamburger. You know, that's pretty much the extent of the vegetables that I ate. So trying to get, trying to go from that, and then I went on Weight Watchers and lost uh, over 100 pounds. Um, And then shortly after that's kind of when my autoimmune problems started cropping up. And even on Weight Watchers, I ate a little bit more vegetables, but it was still like processed, you know, like the Weight Watcher dinners. Oh, really? Yeah, of course. Yeah, they came in a packet, did they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, the little box. And you microwaved microwaved mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So then that was, even though I did lost, I did lose, you know, over a hundred pounds doing that. And then I lost a lot of hair. So, and then I found that back then that was around 2004. That was when Weight Watchers kind of said, oh, you know, we need to teach people to add fat, healthy fats in their diet. Because a lot of, if you ate the packaged meals, they were very low fat, um, high carbohydrate, you know, type type dinners. Um, Mm -hmm. So it kind of went from there. And then when I started developing the autoimmune symptoms, that's when I started reading about, you know, Dr. Furman, you know, his, his plan. Yeah. Um, I read about uh, McDougal. um, And then I watched several YouTube videos on a, I can't think of his name, but it's, I want to say it's Alan or, Alstein, something like it's it's like Medugal, and then there's the uh, vegan ultimate weight loss uh, oh, yeah. chef AJ. Oh yeah, yep. And uh, and then the there's another camp, I guess you could say. There's the vegan camp, and then there's this autoimmune paleo camp. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I tried to do Dr. Furman's diet, and I had um, met, I had did some. He was doing phone consultations back then. I just got very weak and very, very sick um, quickly, and and I kind of experienced the same when I tried to start your protocol, and I think it's just I can't get the volume that I need because uh, when I was counting the calorie weighing because from my Weight Watcher days you weigh and measure everything, so I was weighing and measuring, and I think I was eating about 800 calories a day, and I just couldn't seem to get the volume up there 
because I, the food, you know, I didn't, you know, I'm coming from a highly processed background. So Mm. didn't, then to go to an all vegetable diet with no, yeah, no, nothing, uh, you know, so I struggled. I really couldn't even, I wasn't really even able to get very far in your program before I kind of, you know, bit the book, you know, gave up, Mm. uh, you know, just because I was so hungry. uh, I just couldn't get myself to eat the volume that I thought, you know, would be helpful. Right. Uh, And then the other thing, because I was going also going to a natural path and we did a food sensitivity test. And so some of the items, which I know there's, I know there's deferring opinions on the food sensitivity test and how accurate they are. Um, but there are several items that are in your program that I show I do have a high sensitivity to, mm-hmm. according to this blood work test, like the aramanth, the buckwheat, cucumber, um, those. And and I kind of, and I and I kind of thought, well, how could that be? Why I did have when I was. I, I think I was able to stick to your program for two weeks, you know, and that was before I deviated. And yeah. I did have I did have reduced inflammation. Mm-hmm. I still was in a incredible amount of the joint pain, but but I know it would take my understanding from people I've talked to it'll take over a, one to two to three years before because I've been sick since uh 16, well, let's see, 11 since 2005. Mm -hmm. So I've had this condition for 11 years. Yeah. So I know it's not going to be a fast process. Yeah. Okay. What drugs are you on right now? Um, Right now I'm just cycling on and off prednisone. I've I've failed pretty much all the uh, first tier drugs and the doctor is now in the process and I've just been on the fence about it. He wants me to start taking rituxan infusions, so that's a uh, that he he felt because I've had in the past year and a half I've had four blood clots that they think are due to the autoimmune condition, but they don't know. So he felt rituxan would target the B, the uh, the I don't want to say B cells because I know that's wrong, but it would target. It targets B something, and uh, he felt because my inflammatory markers are kind of in in both the rheumatoid arthritis and the lupus camp. Right. So I'm classified yep. as mixed connective tissue disease. Okay. And he said the drugs are not really designed to treat someone with my condition, and uh, he said they're generally designed for to target the TNF and the rheumatoid whatever those markers are. Mm -hmm. So he's been kind of, he has pretty much said, I, I just have to try the drug to see if it would help or not. But my concern is that I've tried drugs before and I've had serious side effects, um, to where I was hospitalized, uh, about six months ago, um, cause it dropped my white blood count so low that I ended up picking up some type of virus yeah. that I couldn't fight off. Which drug is um, that? Arava. Mm-hmm. It's a oral medication. Okay. Um now just in your notes here, I just want to double check you are on a blood thinner as well at the moment. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I uh I they started me off when I got my first blood clot, I was on Coumadin because that's the uh cheaper um drug. The generic. And then yeah, and then I uh or warfarin, yes. Oh yeah. And then uh I got a two blood clots while being within range on warfare and, right. and so they switched me over to Zeralto. Right. Okay. And uh also a uh proton pump inhibitor, basically for gas uh, acid reflux. Yes, and I only take that as need kinda like with the prednisone, I kinda yeah. take it if I have a flare up yeah. as needed. Um the problem with the the protein pump, pump inhibitor, inhibitor yeah. is that uh is that I think it's exacerbating because I have a lot of GI issues, of which course. is why I've been I've been hospitalized I think four times now. With just I'll start vomiting and I can't stop, and uh, and I try to, you know I'll try to do different like I can't hold down water, I can't hold down um, 
um, any type of like broth, like we, you know, we tried making potato soup and stuff. And uh, the only thing that's helped is going into the, the hospital admits me, gives me IV fluids, and then pretty much the, stars me, I say stars me for like a week, and then until everything settles down, and then they usually release me with high dose prednisone. Um, and then I stay on that for about until I can wean myself off because because now I'm at the point where each time I've had to take prednisone, it's getting more and more difficult to wean myself off. The The pain is just, I, I say it's brutal. I don't know how else to explain it, but it's, it's sort of like somebody took a bat and just beat me all over with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Shall I? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's you've like, given, you've just given stick me, to the program. You've and, given uh, me plenty to work with here. Yeah. Um, so first of all, uh, you know, it, it's you, you're in a situation where you still have an opportunity to inter, intervene with yeah. what seems to me like a deteriorating situation. Um, yes. So I'm going to paint the picture pretty nastily because I want you to take action. And unless you feel this about how serious the situation is and can be, then you might not be inclined to you know, make the necessary changes. It might not be fearful enough or you might not be in a situation where you feel that it's serious enough to really take action, okay? So it seems like, so obviously as you, as you in your words, you know, you have gastrointestinal um, problems. We know that. We know people with rheumatoid arthritis have severe intestinal disorders. They've measured that. Uh, one study showed that many people with rheumatoid don't even have an epithelium, which is uh, the lining on the intestines that uh, it plays the integral role between what's in the intestines and what's in the bloodstream. And so um, you've, you know, you're going to hospital now four times for not being able to hold down food and vomiting up even water, you said at times. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and just uh, bile. Just bile, right. Nothing is even going in through. my stomach, but it's just, mm -hmm. it's spasming so much, I guess it can't. They keep saying it's not like in sync, I guess the nerve impulses. Um, so once it gets super agitated, it I can't get it to calm down. Mm -hmm. And and then, um, you know, you've got this ongoing acid reflux, which you're treating with from time to time with um, antacids, which work against everything that I'm for, which is good quality amounts of hydrochloric acid to break down proteins because it's the proteins yes. entering the blood that's triggering the rheumatoid arthritis. So they are very counterproductive to what I believe should be the, the preferred yeah. path. So I, you know, that, that, you know, again, I'm speaking from a point of view of, of how I view the situation. And of course, none of this is medical advice. It's just what I would do. Okay. So, yeah. and, and then the uh, the pregnazone going up and up and up, and we know that pregnazone causes more leaky gut. So you've got two two of your drugs are working against you in the long term. Yes. The more you take the pregnazone, the worse your leaky gut will be, and the more you continue to have to need to take the protein pump inhibitors, then the more likelihood there is of more undigested proteins entering the increased leaky gut that's going on. Yeah. Okay, so um, now your doctor's talking about. Uh, this biologic, isn't it? The uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what's it called? Rituxan. The rituxin. Sure There's so they, many of you them. You know, it's yeah. not another yeah. name. Uh, That's okay, but yeah. it, a biologic, right? And so once you get on mm -hmm. that, you know, um, then if you don't tolerate it poorly, because you've tolerated drugs poorly in the past, yes. Um, let Let's say that you do okay on it, but then you will still have the default side effects of getting infections, having a very yes. you know weak immune system, being sick all the time, which will probably keep you more inactive. And that, again, works against what we're trying to do with regards to increased activity to keep the joints healthy, to alkalize yeah. the body through exercise. So the picture from the, just to, yeah, just to summarize it in its negative form so that we want to do something about it. All right. Yeah. So I cannot tell you how much of this will go away if you just do what I've put forward, right? How much of it? You should find that acid reflux no longer is an issue in your life after a couple of months. If you just yeah. 
ate this way. The acid reflux is being stimulated by eating too much um, animal-based products that require a tremendous amount of stomach acid and then um, it, you know, it sometimes finds it hard to know when to turn itself off. And so yeah. I would expect that the whole thing settles down in only a couple of months. For instance, I can't think of a client who's following my program inside our community forum who I, who I pay close attention to all the time who has acid reflux, and we've got hundreds of members, yeah. right? It just doesn't exist on the program. Then, if it were me, I'd then be able to get off the protein pump inhibitor. I'd never need to take that because I would see that as each time I need to take that, I'm doing something counterproductive for my health. Yeah. With one less drug in my system, it also doesn't add acidity to the body, not a stomach acid acidity, but a pH of the body, yeah. like an acidosis problem. Um, then what I would also um, uh, expect is that you would need less pregnazone because when you basically lower the inflammation, which you said at the start, you noticed in just two weeks of using the program, yeah. during those two weeks, your inflammation went down. Now, imagine what it could be in just a month or two months or three yeah. months. And if you can halve the frequency of the pregnazone usage, then that is a tremendous improvement to the um, uh, amount of taxing that's happening on your stomach. And when you're not taxing the stomach as much, it has its natural ability to heal, um, sort of, I guess, uh, opened up to it. It just doesn't, it doesn't have that, yeah. uh, it, it just not, you know, restricted as much. Now, um, I'll just keep going back through the, the notes that I took when you were speaking. Um, the food sensitivity tests surrounding one of your, uh, you know, you mentioned the amaranth, the buckwheat, and the cucumber. Now, you can leave out the cucumber. Well, first of all, I don't encourage anyone to get food sensitivity tests. Um, uh, some, okay. of the, some of the best results I've ever seen, and I want to put this politely, are the the almost like soldiers in the army who just follow instructions. So yeah. people who try to um, outsmart what's being put together and over-intellectualize the situation and then do additional things to second-guess what's already prepared for them can often, through something like food sensitivity tests or manipulations because of, in some cases, um, you know, oh, I need more protein, so I need to add more protein, right? And I can answer yeah. all these questions as to why, you know, the, the, the protein's fine. This is X, Y, and Z is fine. The food sensitivity tests, I, I would set aside the results you received on those, but just to be sure, you can even just eliminate the amaranth and the buckwheat and do it just quinoa yeah. and sweet potato based for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then I can almost give you my word that if you then added the buckwheat after a couple of weeks, nothing would happen. That's my deep belief. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, my understanding with the food sensitivity was that with the leaky gut, you're going to show up sensitive to, like, the fact that I show up sensitive to over 40 foods, you know, that just, they said, was indicative that I've got a leaky gut, not so much that I'm actually allergic, you know, to the food. Okay, well, that's a good clarification on that. So you should feel very confident. But, you know, I, I like to sort of minimize the concerns. Why not, you know, do it without the buckwheat? First of all, leave out yeah. the amaranth anyway because it's a problematic little grain that gets all over the kitchen and, and it's just – it actually offers almost the same exact <laughs> nutrients as quinoa and buckwheat. And so it's okay. like when I publish the book, I'm going to actually uh, leave it out. It's just going to be a two-grain pseudo mix, not the actual yeah. – third um, pseudo grain. So leave that out um, and then you can do it with quinoa and, uh, and buckwheat or just the quinoa. Cucumber again, I mean, maybe one in, a one in 200 people react to cucumber. It's very, very rare. And based on your previous dietary behaviors, I'd be amazed if you actually had a food sensitivity to it because I'm almost certain that you never ate it. And we often develop food sensitivities. <laughs> We develop food sensitivity is, mostly to foods. That is that, true. I was thinking, uh, why could I be sensitive? I don't eat. I don't ever eat a cucumber. Yeah, but. yeah, that's right. It's. I mean, it's all just. Uh, it's hogwash, right? Okay. 
Now, let's talk about how to actually implement the program with yeah. um, a degree of compliance because yeah. if, if I could feed you myself or if I were you, um, then within a couple of months, your situation would be tremendously improved. Okay, so yeah. with yours is a motivation issue and a discipline issue and a hab habitual issue because yeah. once you, several things go on. Once you start getting used to, well, once you start getting, so wait, let me back up. There are a couple of phases. First of all, you just got to basically force yourself to stop eating the crap and eating the foods that I recommend. Okay, <laughs> that's stage one. Okay. That's called discipline. You make okay? it sound so easy. Well, everything. I'm still trying to figure out how. Uh, it's like I literally can walk by, eat something. I'm like, why did I just eat? I like there was no filter from. Like, if I could just get a stop gate from eating something to, like a, knowing that I shouldn't eat it. I don't know how to explain it. Well, first but, of all, take all the junk out of the fridge. Don't even give it to yeah. your family because that's a sin for the family. Throw it away, yeah. right? Get the junk away from where it's easily accessible. Fortunately for me, I've never had too big a problem with discipline because I wanted to get well so much that nothing would come between me and my health because yeah. I was told I wouldn't be able to have kids. And the desire to be able to start a family and to actually be a husband that my wife wanted when she first started to... Um, you know, get into a relationship with me and to be able to, um, you know, not put her into a life with someone who was a cripple on medications. That to me yeah. was a must. I mean, I had to. I had to do everything that I possibly could. And fortunately, I've been able to get to, uh, you know, a, a very extraordinary uh, position with that. But um, even if I'd have got halfway, I would have felt that I'd done the right thing by my partner and myself for my life. Yeah. So, um, you know, when you know, right, that there is something right in front of you that you can do to lower what is one of the worst diseases you can possibly get, and you can throw lupus in the mix, as you said before, if you know that you yeah. can follow this path, why on earth would you go and eat in a way that, aggravates your gut, aggravates the need for all these other medications and for the involvement of the medical system when yeah. you choose what goes in your body. It's a choice. Yeah, and that's a, yeah. And that's where I've had the, uh, that's why I kind of thought, well, am I stuck? Try like, it, am I too far nope, you're in not. that addiction nope. mindset? I tell you why to it's hard. We're getting into the second stage. The first one is discipline. You have to yeah. pretend it's your daughter or your son. Right? Imagine if it's a loved one and you knew the right way because they're a child. Right? Children don't know the right path. We have to teach them. And if your child each day was touching an electric fence three times a day and every time they touch the electric fence, it's slightly worsened their health to the point where one yeah. day they might not be able to even walk over and touch the fence. You would tell yeah. them, do not touch the fence. I, pre I prevent you from going near that fence. Yeah. In the same way, three times a day, you're going over and touching a fence. You have to yeah. be the adult and teach yourself like a kid. And you have to say, no. Because after you do this, if you can get through, there's a lot of different statistics around how long it takes to make something a habit. Now, yeah. previously it was thought that it's about 21 days for, a, for someone for, to create a habit. That's all been revised and, the, and it's actually a lot longer than that, unfortunately, uh, and it's yeah. different for different people. But, you know, it might take you six weeks before you – get a habitual routine around the foods. That means you reach for the right thing each time out of habit because once it becomes yeah. habit, it becomes so much easier. You're not fighting. You're not making decisions. It uses up so much um, 
mental energy in deciding what to eat all the time. But once it becomes a routine, it's just like getting up, putting on your socks, putting on your shoes. You go to the yeah. fridge, you go in there, you get the oatmeal, you put on the boiling water and you put on some, you know, some berries or something, for instance, which would be my breakfast, right? And so I don't even think yeah. about it. So, so the first step, and this is, again, we're still in this sort of uh, uh, discussion around how to actually stick to it so that you can make yeah. so many improvements. The first thing is just you've got to have the discipline, right? But then the second yeah. part, and it only is a few weeks, only is a few, maybe two or three weeks, then the habit kicks in, right? And then the third thing that happens around about this, in fact, probably only after one to two weeks, I've, the, the studies have shown that your gut bacteria portfolio will change rapidly. Within a few weeks, you've got a completely different microbiome than what you do right now. Now, if you can yeah. keep nurturing that community of bacteria by giving the good guys lots of fiber, especially leafy greens to eat, and starving out yeah. the pathogens and unfriendly bacteria by um, withholding the foods, so-called foods, that they eat, yeah. then their chorus of signals that travel from the gut to your brain via the gut-brain axis will be singing a different song. They will yeah. start to be um, requesting through subtle signals to your brain affecting your taste buds and your hunger levels, and you will start to be in sync with the foods that are supporting the healthy bacteria. And at that point, Everything's starting to come into alignment because your discipline's there, firstly. Yeah. It's a habit, and now your gut bacteria are asking for the right foods. Now, once all three yeah. of those things are in um, parallel, you then have a very, very powerful platform to keep up the momentum, and it doesn't feel as difficult. Yeah. And let me throw one more thing in the mix is that once you start to get results, motivation goes through the roof because once you start to feel better and your energy levels are better when you wake up in the morning and you notice that your morning stiffness is less and that more joints are moving more freely and when you're able to sleep better at night because your joints aren't waking you up or the drug is keeping you too alert when you're on the prednisone or you've got digestive disorders and all these things that disrupt your sleep and therefore your energy levels, then you will think to yourself, I'm getting here. I, I, I'm making it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm achieving this. And in the process of getting uh, – uh, in the process of, of receiving those positive feedback from your body, it totally takes the whole process to a whole new level. And people yeah. start telling you, Anna, you look better. You know, you, yeah. you, you look like you're glowing and you're moving better. And, hey, I just saw you get up off the chair like you don't normally get up. Or you just seem yeah. happier and you feel more social. And you concentrate better yeah. at work and all of these things. And so I think that, you know, coming back to if, if it were me, I, I would uh, – what I'll do is I'll give you a, a free month subscription to our support community because I want to get oh, you wow. through. Oh, yeah. Okay, I want to get you through. I'll yeah. hold your hand through the first uh, – this hey. next month. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I'd always ask that if I if I could have a Clint Patterson in my back pocket, because I think that's a lot of when I was able to stick to some of the diets, but it, it just took like 90 percent concentration. You know, like I'd listen to like your lectures or or other lectures, you know, in the morning when I get off work, you know, just to try to keep keep the focus of what I was trying to do. But uh, but yeah, that would be awesome. Let's do that. You may you may make me drink the cucumber and celery juice. Look, <laughs> it's you know I want to defer the responsibility back to you, and I'm going to encourage yeah. you to do it. But when you decide that it's not me, it's not someone else that's going to get you out of this. You can do yeah. this. 
Think of a time in your life when you've achieved what does appear to be, has appeared to be absolutely impossible, right? Yeah. We've all done things that other people would have thought impossible. And so if we can just go over and drink a celery and cucumber juice, I mean, that's, that, that's a small hurdle compared to what we've all been through. Anyone over the age of 30 has been through some kind of very big life challenge and they've, they've overcome it and, uh, yeah. and just hit 40, you know, uh, last year. And, and, and certainly I could say that from 30 to 40, the challenges certainly for me, cause that's when my health deteriorated, um, can, yeah. can be at a whole new level. And so if, 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 you know, it, yeah, start to start to own the solution. You are the solution. Yeah. You are the solution. And when I use the word solution, I'm not painting a, 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 a picture or making a claim that one day you'll have zero pain, zero drugs, you'll feel perfect and you'll be able to eat everything you want. What I'm saying is you're your own puppeteer, right? You control the yeah. strings of the little Anna doll. And if you move yeah. her towards the fridge and then and you move her hand forward... <laughs> So you're saying when I say the chocolate jumped into my hand, the chocolate never jumped into my hand. Someone put it there. <laughs> and you've got the strings, all right? So I think that uh, I think we'll leave it at that for the moment. Um, yeah. thank, thank you for accepting my, my frank words. I know that sometimes it's difficult to... Uh, to, to, to hear these things, we're already so delicate and we're already so emotional and frustrated from having the disease. Um, you know, these conversations are, are sometimes a little bit uh, 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 confronting, but I think that um, it's a conversation we needed to have. I know you reached, reached out to me and said, let's do this. So I hope that you've got out of this yeah. um, what, what you've hoped. And I'm looking forward to um, really working with you for the next month and uh, and see how far we can get you along the, the path. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate I'm glad you uh, sent out that email because uh, I think I saw it like at five. I don't know what my time is compared to yours, but I saw it like at five in the morning. And I thought, maybe I can maybe I can get this. I was like, it's probably not going to happen, but maybe just maybe let me get let me let me text them real quick. So I'm definitely glad it worked out. Yeah, so am I. So am I, because we've covered a lot of really important things, and uh, I know that um, other people will, will benefit greatly from from this conversation. I think a lot of like with the motivation, everything is related to kind of like I've been, you know, depression and things like that, and so and then getting the motivation, not motivation, but that you're worth you're worth taking care of. Because I think with the illness, you feel like you know you're worthless. It's there's no point, there's no, you know, so I think trying to bridge the diet is a a very critical piece, but getting the mindset that, yes, I'm worthy of doing this and taking these steps and, you know, because the shotgun approach is take the pill, you know, keep on, keep on with your hectic lifestyle with trying to burn it at both ends and trying to eat go out and eat with everybody, you know, the social aspect or go out, have the few drinks or, you know, but all of that is detrimental to someone. Well, it's detrimental to everybody, but especially with, with these conditions um, and, and it's going against the grain, you know, than what society has. And that's always uh, very difficult. No happiness at a social event that involves drinking and smoking and late night party <laughs> can even touch the amount of joy that you will feel when you have taken ownership of this and dramatically improved your health. Your, awesome. I'm your, hoping. Your friendships will improve. You develop a social respect from your family, from your friends, from colleagues who look at you and instead of, oh, you know, she's struggling from that disease. I don't know much about it. I know she's on lots of drugs. That might be why she, you know, takes days off work sometimes. I don't want to ask. It goes from that to, wow, yeah. their thoughts go to, wow, 
she's onto something. She she's really like changing her life. And they are so different, those thoughts that people have of you, and you sense them. Yeah. You sense them. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Clint. I appreciate you doing this and talking to me today. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. All right. Well, we'll we'll um, we'll work together, and I think that'll help tremendously. Awesome. All right. Well, you have a great day. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much, Clint. See you, and have right. a good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. You too. Bye.